Hey, welcome back. This is Mr. Kelly. I'm going over number two from the 2024 AP Pre-Calc test. And you know what? Thinking about this question, I am like Natalie and Bruglia. I'm a little bit torn. It's a calculator question, and I could work everything out and spend all the time doing that. I don't want to make the video too long, though. That is one of my problems, making long videos. So let's just roll with it the way it is right now. I'm just going to start reading the problem. We'll start doing it. You know, we start, it tells you that on T equals zero, there are 40,000 units. You know, you could write that number out as 40,000, but don't do that. Like, just leave the unit thousands of units, right? I mean, that's what the unit is, thousand units. So this will give you two points. We're going to start with zero and then 40, and then we will have 91 and 76. So there are two points right there. Question A is always the same every time. You just have to plug it in. Plug into the equation they give you. Now this equation they give you, it could be of several forms. This one, look at it, there's a logarithm in there. Ooh, but it could be exponential, it could be polynomial. But what you need to do is plug into these variables and don't plug into A and B. Because look, it says down here, solve for A and B. So if it says solve for A and B, don't plug into them. I mean, that's not what these values are. These values are X and Y, right? But not in this equation, they are T and G. Right, but it's like X and Y. So we're just gonna plug them in. So part A1 says use the given data, which we came up with these points, to write two equations. So here are the two equations that I have. Look, here's where I sub the values in. 0, 40, and 91, 76. And th they're going right into this equation right here for T and G. So just sub in those numbers. Look, I didn't even figure out 0 plus 1. Don't figure that, just leave it. If you leave it, guess what? That is an equation that can be used to find the variables for A and B. So that is part A number one. You get full credit for that. Now during part two, they ask you to actually find A and B. So here's what we can do. You have to be given something to help you out because these are ugly. These are real ugly. But look up here. The natural log of zero plus one. If I simplify that, that's just the natural log of one, which means the exponent that I put on E, base E, right, to get one. What exponent do I put on E to get one? That's what this is, this whole part right here. What exponent do I put on E to get one? You can use your calculator, but you should know that. You know, you have a log and then you have a one, the exponent's gotta be zero, right? So the exponent I put on E to get one is a zero. So this is gonna zero out. So if this is equal to zero, the B goes with it and you're left with A equals 40. Easy enough. Then you could take that 40, A is going to equal 40, and you plug it in right here. Let's see what that looks like. So in this equation here, we are showing that the natural log of 1 equals 0. That goes away. We get A equals 40. So then we go to the other equation with 76. We plug in a 40 for A. You can see how that 40 fits nicely in there. Subtract 40 from each side. You get 36 equals B times the natural log of 92. So when you divide both sides by the natural log of 92, you're going to get B equals 36 divided by the natural log of 92. That is 7.9614. Boom, we found A, 40, and B, 7.9614. Okay, on to part B. Use the given data to find the average rate of change. People, that is just another name for the slope. So we need to use the slope formula. So here's how we write it out. The average rate of change, and you can't abbreviate that on this question, but that equals f of 91. I'm showing that I need the function value minus the other function value all over the x values. Remember, y goes on top, x on the bottom. And then I substitute in those values, and I get approximately equal to, see we got a little wavy there, 0.3956. And remember, a unit is thousands per day, thousands of units per day, but guess what? You don't need that unit according to the scoring guide. You can just have that number right there, 0.3956. Now, Suppose way back up here, you wrote the number out 40,000, and you wrote the number 76,000. Well, then this number would be different right here. It'd be 395,000, and that's okay, according to the scoring rubric. But why would you want to make your life difficult like that? The average rate of change is 0.3956. All right, on to the next question. Use the average rate of change found in one to estimate the number of video games sold in T equals 50 on the day 50. Now, here's how we do it. This is how I did it. So... I'm gonna look at the point 0, 040. So it's zero, we're at 40, right? It's zero, when t is zero. I need to go to t is 50. So if I wanna find f of 50, then I take that 40, which is the output, 
and I add 50 slopes to it. The slope is positive 0.3956. So take that y value, which is 40, and you add this slope 50 times because the slope is how much the function changes in one unit, right? So if I go over 50 units, which is what I'm doing, I'm being asked to find a t equals 50, which is 50 units away from zero, right? So I start at 40 and I add 50 times this, this slope that we have and you'll get 59.7802,000. Okay, we only got one more left right here. Just kidding, we got two. So let A of T represent the estimate for the total number of units the video game sold. It's the estimate that we just, it's this line. This is a line that we created, right? For A of 50 found in number two, it can be shown that A of 50 is less than G of 50. All right, let's be really clear of what's going on here. I'm not sure we know what's going on, but I'm gonna draw a little picture so we know. The equation they gave us here is a logarithm equation. If you were to graph it, after you get A and B, you can put it in your calculator and graph it. It's going to give you a logarithmic graph. Let me draw a little logarithmic graph right here. So here's our x, y axis. It kind of crosses at 40 and it goes like this, right? And so then they ask you to estimate the average rate of change at 91, which is like over here somewhere, and at zero. And so that's right here. And so that creates a line. Oh, wow, I'm actually impressed with myself. But that line is the estimate that we have right here, right? And so we used that line. We started at 40. We went over in part two here. We went over to 50, which is in between zero and 91. And we get some point right here that's our estimate. And so they're saying that your estimate is lower than the actual function, which it is. Right? And they explain why, in general, your estimate will be lower for all values of g. Now, one of the reasons we can use that's pretty, it shores up everything pretty well, is the idea that the graph here has a name we can describe it. The slope is decreasing throughout the entirety of the, of the graph, and we call that concavity being down. The graph is concave down. And when you have a graph that is concave down, the, this red line here, the points where they intersect, that is called a secant line. But you can say that the line used to estimate will always be underneath these points of intersection right here. It's always going to be less than. So here's what my, here's what my uh, response was. A of T is going to be less than G because G is concave down. So all the estimates on the secant line will be under the function G. As long as T is between 0 and 91. So this is 0 and this is 91. Those are the two points of intersection. Now, part C. The makers of the video game reported the daily sales have decreased after 0.91. So they're saying, you know, this logarithmic function, I'm going to use a different color, but after 91 actually started decreasing. So I'm going to, it's not the logarithmic function anymore. So I'll, delete, I'll do my best there. I don't know. But we'll get rid of that. And it actually started decreasing. But guess what? That estimate line is still going up. So the question is, explain why the error in model G increases after T91. Well, the error is the difference between the function, which is right here, and the estimate, which is up there. Now notice the estimate is always increasing. And the function is now at this point, based on what they told us right here in this question, after 91, it is decreasing. So if the function is decreasing and the estimate continues to increase, then our error is just gonna grow because one's going up and the other one's going down. So we can kind of write that up you know, as t is greater than 91, the estimates increase uh, while, ooh, that should be while. Who wrote will? Who wrote will? I didn't write why. All right, so while g is decreasing, the distance between at and g will increase. Therefore, the error increases. And that's, I think, the best we can do. That would get us a pretty good score right there. This is worth six points. As you know, every one is worth six points. Pre-calc students, I wish you Good luck out there. This is Mr. Kelly. Remember, it's nice to be important, but it's more important to be nice. You remember that. See you.